Hello all. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss few more useful commands of accessibility. So I'm taking the same example from previous tutorial. So in some cases, uh, people they will be distributing the system uh, using only the bitstream as well as the ELF file, only the uh, file for programming the hardware part and the software executable. So you will have only this bit file, which is for programming the hardware part and this ELF file which is for programming the processor. In addition to that you will usually get this file also ps7.init.tcl file also. So we will see uh, if you have access to only these three files uh, how to program your board. Okay. So similar thing I have shown before also you can do this using SDK also directly. Now in the background actually SDK is running the XCT so in this tutorial it will be clear how it all happens so XCT this time I'm going to take the standalone one so if you go to your Silinx installation uh, you will have this Silinx software command line tools so you take it and let me change directory where my City. Okay, so my board is already connected to my computer and it's powered up. Uh, both cables are connected for JTAG as well as UART. So I have my UART interface here. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to connect. Uh, so-called Silinx server program with your Jetta code. So the first command that we'll be issuing is called connect. Okay, so this will basically connect your computer with Jetta code, and uh, the output will look something like that. After that, one useful command is called targets. So if you type targets, you will list all the devices which are connected on this Jetta chain. So you can see, like I have. The APU, which is basically uh, the top module for the two um, Cortex N and processes. So I have the both processes here as well as the FPGA fabric. Okay, so they are all sitting on my JTAG chain. So I can see it. You can also see the status of the processes. They are currently in the running state. So they can be either in running state or they can be in suspended state or they can be in stop state so different states are possible okay next step we can download our fpga bitstream so we have our bitstream here so you just take it and you give it now he is programming the board you can see the progress and all and he has finished now if you look at the board the blue led will glow indicating he is successfully programmed. Uh, the done signal goes up. Okay, so once you have uh, done the hardware part, so that's it about hardware programming. We can go to the software part. So the first thing you need to do is you need to choose which is your target uh, processor core for running your software. So you have two processes here. You need to choose one of them. So for that, you need to type target followed by target number so you can see the numbers here one two three four so suppose i am using this uh, processor core you have to type target two. okay so we have chosen that processor as our target after that you need to run this tickle script so this tickle script actually comes from our sdk itself so If I go to my SDK directory and if you go to the hardware platform, that is where you have this tickle script, this one, ps 7 inittickle There is an equivalent C code also, but uh, for XCT, you will have to use the tickle script. Okay, so it's coming from here. If other people are distributing or you are distributing your code to other people without anything other than Bitstream and ELA file, you are supposed to distribute this tickle script also. So that script basically has again XCT commands for initializing 
different part of PS okay so you take it and first you need to source it so you type source ps7 underscore init.cl after that you need to run some of the functions inside this tickle so those functions we are actually familiar okay so if you go to our run configuration if you remember we used to check this option ps7 init and ps7 post config and before that there is this program fpga so when this command is running program fpga actually accessibility is running the same command fpga this command that we used same way we need to run these two commands ps7 init and ps7 post config so this ps7 init will be again initializing the internal blocks of the ps especially uh, he will initialize the DDR controller. He will initialize the MIO part, things like that. Okay, so that we can see here, PS7 underscore init. Okay, so this is the uh, function, eccentrical actually. Okay, so he is internally initializing the MIO, the PLL, the DDR things like that. So we need to do it. If we don't do it, the DDR controller will be under reset condition and you will not be able to download your ELF file to the board. So after sourcing this you need to give PS7 underscore init. Okay. After that you need to give the same command PS7 post config. This one. So what it does is it will enable some of the circuits, the barrel shifters inside the PS which will enable sending the clock from PS to the PL okay so if you have a hardware part in your design you should run uh, this function also this command also so here you will type PS7 post config if you don't run it your hardware will not get clock hardware in the PL part he won't get clock okay. okay once that is also done now we are ready to download our ELF file, the software file. So this is our software, xsctest.elf. So the command for downloading ELF is simply dow xsct underscore test.elf. Now you can see like he has downloaded the ELF file and he should say like successfully downloaded and your processor is suspended. So he downloads the ELF file but he doesn't start to execute it okay so the processor will be in suspended state and if you look at the tra term you will see like nothing happens there okay so for the elf to run you need to issue the command con continue okay so the stop command is used for stopping the processor he's saying like already stopped now to make the processor run you need to issue the command con now if you just issue con he will uh, start executing from the current program counter but uh, ideally or always your program will be starting from the first address in DDR so the first address in DDR is again remember is this one this is the first address so your program should start running from here so for that you need to type continue ddr 0x followed by this first address which is 0, 0, 001 1 2 3 4 5 and let's see what actually happens let me keep my term here and you will see this print come okay so that print is coming from our program remember this is that print and that is coming because now our processor is running okay so after this it's same as previous tutorial we are supposed to download our image file so that command is again dow but you need to put the flag data here if you don't put data that means you are downloading the ELF file okay so dow data followed by of the file and a color.in 
followed by the starting address which is our input buffer 130320 yeah. okay he finished downloading then we press enter so image is copied he finished so we can read back and check our image which was memory read size is byte binary file name is out dot in we need to start reading from this address 120320 and we need to read 655 forgot uh, it was a 256 times 256 65536 okay okay so here is that file now same as before if we run our script in matlab view image this script be able to see the output this is expected output so those are some of the useful commands so basically connect target DAO, memory read memory write fpga stop continue etc now now we use our xst in interactive mode right you are writing one command at a time and you are looking at the output things like that instead of that it is possible to write all these commands in a single script file with extension tickle okay for example here i have a lot of commands written more or less same commands that we used and we'll be able to execute all these commands in one shot so to do it first of all you need to configure your environment variable to include the path to xst XCT, sorry. XCT is actually uh, sitting in your Xilinx installation directory uh, under SDK and whatever version you are using under bin. Okay, so this is where XCT is sitting. So if it is uh, Windows in your environment variable under path environment variable, you include this path also. In Linux, you export this path. To your environment variable so if you do like that you will be able to run this script uh, uh, directly without this interactive mode okay so let me quickly show it so guess okay, so let me show you my script okay so first one is connect i know like always i am using first processor core so this one so i am programming my fpga here so that bit file i need to keep in the same folder this one after that i am initializing ps7 post config i am downloading my elf here there is some difference so i don't want this interactive thing i don't want uh, me to see this address on the terminal then download then press enter here I need to happen everything in one shot for that what I am doing is you can see this is another useful command uh, stands for breakpoint add okay so he will download the ELF and he will add a breakpoint at the main function so he adds a breakpoint here main function and uh, here i am asking him to continue execution until he finds this breakpoint okay so when he reaches at this breakpoint the program execution will stop automatically and i am downloading the image file here you can see and this address is a different address so what i did is uh, in my original software i commented out this scanf so that he doesn't stop here and i ran my code once and i found out like uh, what is the address for input and output and they are not going to change okay so if you are not changing your code these addresses they will always be same so i found those address first time and uh, the input image address is this one output one is this one okay so i added a breakpoint 
I started my program, but it comes and stops at main. Then I downloads my input image. Then I ask him to continue execution. So he comes out of the breakpoint. He continues to execute uh, up to five seconds I have put. So this timeout is the maximum time for which he should continue execution. I'm sure my program will finish within five seconds. And after five seconds, I am reading from this address and getting the output image. Same as before. Only thing is these addresses I have now hard coded. And since I changed my code here, the ELF file I am using here is after removing this kind of. Okay. So you make that script file and just type SCT followed by the file name. So we need that uh, script also here. Okay. Image process and Lena color also here. Need all of them. Image process article. And you can see like now he is programming the FPGA, he programmed the FPGA. Uh, he downloaded everything happened okay and i have this out dot bin here now now if i check whether it is right or wrong i will get the right out so that's it uh, maybe i can mention one more command uh, one is the reset command. So if you type RST, it will. Okay, so first I need to connect. And I need to say my pocket is 2. So if you use the reset command, you will reset the entire system, which is same as This option here reset entire system okay so once you issue reset he will reset the entire system as well as the fpga part will be cleared okay so there won't be any bitstream you will have to reprogram your system so let me try once more so So FPGA, this one, and source PS7, it article, PS7 init, PS7 post config, then how XLCT s.elf, download it. But nothing comes here. But when we press continue, here the program under address is already here. So CON will do. Or you can optionally put CON address 0x00100. So everything happened. Okay. Now suppose you want to rerun the software part alone. What you can do is you can simply do again continue from this value. So the program order will be reset to this value and the pro processor will run, which uh, effectively means you are rerunning only the software part. You don't have to download the bitstream or anything. So see now, if I press it again, you can see like he runs it again. So each time I press, he reruns. Only thing is my image data is lost. Okay, so ours is a special case. We have a image data going, so we are supposed to download the image data again before uh, doing this uh, continue before this restarting. Okay, otherwise your program will simply restart. 
So I hope uh, these commands will be useful to you. So those who want to use XSCT instead of using SDK, you can do it entirely from the command prompt or you can run the script once and just execute it. And again, if you want to distribute your system to other people, uh, you can just write this script here, which does all these operations uh, in a single file and you can just distribute this tickle file your pit file, ELF file, and this PS7 init tick. That's it. Okay, thank you.